What's amazing in retrospect is that two years ago when this story first broke, the usual liars and power worshipers in the media, those of whom the rare few who even acknowledged that Tony Bobulinski existed, dismissed the story by saying, well, yeah, but it's Biden's son. It had nothing to do with Biden. As if Hunter Biden would be able to make millions of dollars in, say, Ukraine or China on the basis of his own expertise, which amounted to precisely nothing. He never had a real job. He had no skills. How was he getting so rich? Because his dad was the vice president. That's how. They were selling access to the United States government with Joe Biden's brother. And the money was in part going to Joe Biden. And that was all very clear because Hunter Biden said it repeatedly on text that any news organization could have read. But Tony Bobulinski already knew that because he saw that. He'd already met with Joe Biden directly. So we asked him again about this. Put some flesh on those bones. And he did. Watch. You're business partners with Hunter and Jim Biden, Joe Biden's son and brother. Correct. Both of them, Hunter Biden has received some coverage for his art. Uh, I call it the Biden family because, as you know, it's been well, well, I say well documented. You well documented it. But I met with Joe multiple times. Yes. And now, subsequent to the election, he's now the sitting president of the United States. But there are hundreds of data points that Joe Biden was acting in, uh, in a capitalistic term, I would say, the chairman. The chairman of J.P. Morgan doesn't take eight meetings down with the people, you know, analyzing companies. The chairman serves a purpose, right? He's a figurehead. He shows up at meetings, shakes hands, advises, you know, has faith in his team. Effectively, that was Joe Biden's role in the Biden family business ventures and uh, around the world. And not just my venture. I met with him uh, um, multiple times. Um, I think it was the Daily Mail that made a recording public where Joe Biden reaches out to um, Hunter Biden in December 2018 after the New York Times had published an extensive article on CFC Chairman Yi and how they were deploying billions of dollars around the world with different governance, ba governments basically acting as the capitalistic arm of One Belt, One Road. So I'd like um, to play that voicemail. This is from the sitting president of the United States. This is from Joe Biden to his son, Hunter. Hey, pal, it's dad. It's 815 um, on uh, Wednesday night. If you get a chance, give me a call. Not, nothing urgent. I just want to talk to you. I thought the article, at least the thing on online, that's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times, was good. I think it's clear. And uh, anyway, um, if you get a chance, give me a call. I love you. I mean, that's it. That's staggering. The sitting president of the United States, but that's Joe Biden in his own voice telling the American people, I was always well aware of the business ventures my family was involved in. So much so, I could tell my son, I read a detailed article that has 50 facts in it. Imagine just sitting in a room with national security and the intel agencies with that article, talking about corruption, talking about China, talking about the Chinese Communist Party, the Liberation Army of China. Joe Biden is saying, I read that article, and you're in the clear, Hunter. And he leaves that voicemail. For a son. So, um, do you think that the Bidens were aware of the effects on the United States of doing business with China? It's funny. I think in their mind they view Russia as a bigger threat than China. Um, they sort of talk and operate like that, uh, which was always surprising to me. Um, uh, but uh, I think they're well aware of it. Um, the magnitude, you know, Hunter in his own uh, words talks about being in business with the spy chief of China. Did you ever talk to Hunter Biden directly about this? Obviously, I was aware of what was being done in 2015 and 2016 um, by James Gillier and Rob Walker with the Chinese company CFC while Joe Biden was still the sitting vice president of the United States. Um, there was a text message where I was early on having uh, discussions with Hunter about, you know, what is CFC focused on um, and Chairman Yi? Are they doing any deal or what kind of deals? And Hunter, in a very long text message, just says, you know, we're, we're willing to do any deals except I think he excluded, you know, military tech that would give the Chinese uh, military an, an advantage over the United States military. But outside of that, they were ready and willing to do any other deal. 
So you said they viewed Russia, and it's, it's clearly true that they do, as a bigger threat than China, and as someone who has worked around the world, you, you think that's ludicrous. But they were also willing to do business deals with Russia, correct? Uh, they were. They were. And um, there's a very well documented, um, you know, Senator Johnson and Senator Grassley. And sadly enough, it came out after the election. But they, um, you know, they initially uh, published a report in September 2020. Two weeks after the election in November 2020, they published a 70 page document that's publicly available to anybody that's watching this that wants to, 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 um, to review it that goes through in detail the involvement of Hunter Biden and the Biden family with knowledge of a deal that was being struck between CFC buying a $9 billion stake in the US sanctioned Russian controlled by Putin energy company and writing a $9 billion check. They weren't a silent partner and, you know, we're gonna put 9 million or 90 million or 900 million. They were buying a $9 billion stake, approximately 14% of Rosneft. Once again, US sanctioned, Putin controlled Russian energy company and Hunter Biden and the Biden family were right in the middle of all of that. Have you had any contact with Hunter or Jim Biden? No, the last <laughs> So the last contact I had with the Biden family is actually when I was in my interview with the, uh, um, with the FBI on October 23rd for that five plus hours. Um, on my BlackBerry, Jim Biden called me via WhatsApp. And um, you know I was there voluntarily, but uh, so my phone starts ringing in the middle of this interview. So I look down and I'm like, I'm like, is he really calling me right now? <laughs> <laughs> so I show the phone to my lawyer and he's like, and then I show it to the agents. The agents got up out of their chair and left the room. They were like, uh, you can take that call if you want. And so I answered it, and there was nobody on the other side. So I don't know if it was a uh, mistake, or they were trying to send me a message, or uh, what it was. But that's the last uh, interaction or communication I've had with the Biden family. So. so you are the key to this story, and there's a lot at stake. I wish I wasn't, but... Yeah. Of course. You didn't choose it, obviously. But you are, and there's an awful lot at stake. Um, are, are you concerned about what the consequences might be for you and your family? Um, yeah, of course. I, I mean, I have a, um, my immediate family, my extended family, uh, I'm concerned at, but the good news is they're all patriots. You know, we all uh, bleed red, white, and blue. We believe in this country, the greatest country in the world, uh, hands down, and these facts matter. Um, I don't matter, the, the facts matter, um, and the parent, American people deserve to know them, and, um, and verify them, and ask their senators and congressmen to verify them, and ultimately uh, hold the uh, Biden family and uh, the current administration accountable for them. I mean, imagine this, to this day, two years, Joe Biden is yet to be asked, did he ever meet with me? Not one time. Not one time. So we've had two years to look into you. Uh, we looked into you before our first interview. Uh, and I should say, just because I think our viewers should know, you know, we've interviewed a lot of whistleblowers I have over 30 years more than. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are telling the truth, probably most, but almost all of them want something. And we can say, because we verified it, you're not actually looking for anything. You don't need the money, that's for sure. It's only downside for you. Um, and that's one of the reasons we were confident enough in you to do a, a second interview. Why are you coming out now again? I'm coming out now because American people still are being lied to about the facts, right? Nothing's been done. They're still thinking, oh, that deal never happened, or, you know, Hunter Biden was a troubled child. They're not aware of the tens of millions of dollars, the thousands of, you know, pages of documentation and the facts. The DOJ is claiming they're gonna, they had to couch this. They can't do anything near an election. I don't want to be sitting here in December and they actually indict Hunter Biden. And then the American people are like, why weren't we made aware of those facts? This is crazy. I would have changed my vote for that congressman or that senator or that governor or that attorney general. So um, uh, that's why I'm coming out now. And as I referenced earlier, I came back from summer travel to find out that the person that was running point on the trove of documents and text messages that were provided to the FBI just suddenly retired and walked out of the building. Does it, I mean, you've got the most powerful agencies in the world, the FBI and the CIA, working against you. That's not an overstatement. We've seen it happen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's... You just made my heart skip, but... Uh. It's true. <laughs> and that's quite an array of opponents. Um, red, white, and blue. 
greatest country on the face of the earth. Um, I believe facts matter and the truth ultimately will come out. Did you hear that? He just said that Joe Biden's brother called him while he was talking to the FBI. How would Joe Biden's brother know he was talking to the FBI? Who's running the FBI? Well, his name is Chris Ray. We now know that the FBI suppressed the story. They never called Bobulinski back, never did a second interview. And then they called the social media companies to censor it to influence the outcome of a presidential election. Has that ever happened? Why is this man still running the FBI? Why has no one asked him about it? Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.